Welcome to Coffee with Kia. I am Cassie Benedict, Director of Outreach Services for Kia. Hi everyone, Keith Ritchie here, Assistant Director of Outreach here. Keith, you sound phenomenal today. I know, it's right? like clear as day. It's right? like we got brand new mics or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you watched, listened to, you know, dreamed about the first two episodes of Coffee with Kia, we were just dipping our toes in. Yeah, it was okay. our heavy metal episodes heavy guitar distortion yes yes yeah. we just wanted to be sure that you guys uh were paying close attention and that you had to listen really closely so um we're getting fancy up in here i know we got some podcast mics yep we got this black this black backdrop that you know i may yep. or may not knock down before the end of yep. this um but yeah so we're getting fancy and i do want to give a shout out to the people who make this possible uh, Lene Lawrence and Zach Smith are our digital media specialists and graphic designers at Kia, and they are phenomenal, and they're my favorite, and they make this possible. We couldn't do yeah. this without them. So all 100%. the funny things that happen in Coffee with Kia, uh, we owe to them. Yeah. It's 0% sure. us and all them. So Yeah, they just, you know, we're just in our natural element, but yeah, they, they actually <laughs> right. put this all together, so <laughs> so that's right. yeah. We were talking, you know, I sit around and watch Coffee with Kia. In my free time. And uh, Keith and I were talking yesterday about, you know, some things that we wanted to do differently. And I said, you know, but honestly, like, the content is 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 gold. And he said, well, we do have a very specific demographic, target demographic, and it is essentially the two of us. Right. <laughs> so we are our own favorite audience members. Yeah, so right. really, I'm just doing all of this so that I can listen back to it and mm-hmm. think highly of myself. Helps break up the drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Um, okay. So, uh, this episode is all about the 2425 FAFSA soft launch, which uh, we found out about just a handful of days before it opened. And uh, we'll start out first, though, with a little coffee talk. Um, Keith, we are four days into the 2425 FAFSA season. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> it's, it's been a whirlwind, um, you know been real and it's been great but maybe not totally real great (laughs) right Uh, right. but yeah no I think we're all just excited for this thing to be off the ground and and running I know you know the first couple days were a little choppy um, with the soft launch where you know it would be working for a few minutes then it wouldn't be and then not a whole lot of talk in that those first couple days about time frame of when all of the kinks would get worked out but I will say this the biggest thing I've noticed and and walked away with is it seems like every day it's getting a little bit better and that's all we can ask for right yeah I will agree with that. I don't think that anybody walked into this FAFSA season with the notion that it was going to be real smooth. Sure. You know, I don't, I just think that we all were aware that there's going to be glitches, there's going to be kinks. I'm not sure that we knew there were going to be this many. I'm not sure that we knew the soft launch was going to be what it was. Right. Um, And so, you know, we'll talk about that. But, um, what have been your, like, specific interactions with the new FAFSA so far? So, you know, there, there have been some folks who have just been frustrated with mm-hmm. it, and rightfully so. I get that. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you know, everything is, is pointing to December 31st, and then, you know, you go on there, and it's not available, you know, or, or you get kicked off halfway through. The, the name of the game with this, and really like any year, is just patience. Right. Especially the first week or two. And, and that part's not new. I mean, even with all the changes that we talked about for this particular cycle, it's always a little glitchy the yeah. first week or so that True. the FAFSA is open. But again, it seems like every every day it seems like it's working a little bit more smoothly uh, for folks. But I know, you know, the, the, the feedback I've been getting from parents and students is once they're able to get over that hurdle, the right. tech issues, the website being available, that sort of thing, once they get into the actual FAFSA, things have been going really well. For the most part. I agree. I'm, I am hearing some positive feedback, which we'll talk about some of the positive feedback, too, um, because we don't want this to just be, like, 30 minutes of us talking about, oh, the fast, the new fast is hard. Right. Um, but the, I have also heard some, some of the positive feedback. One thing, you know, Keith and I were talking about this morning is we've been doing this a long time. Um, we've established we're old. <laughs> we've done this yeah. a long time. And... Um, we're used to being, and I don't want to sound conceited when I say this, but we're used to being the FAFSA experts. Right. I mean, we're used to being able to say, like, we've seen it all, we've been through it all, whatever questions you have, we can fix it, we can address it, we can help you. And then in the last couple of days, 
just by nature of the relationships that I built when I was in the field, I've had a lot of people reaching out to me with specific questions about what's going on with their FAFSA. And it's so hard to be like, I just don't know. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of like, this. wait and see, and let's see how this turns out. Right. I, I will say one thing that I've heard quite a bit, um, some glitches with the SAI numbers at the tail end. Yes. Like, if someone has been fortunate enough in the first day or two of the FAFSA being open, you know, I wouldn't put a whole lot of weight into whatever that SAI number shows up on the, on the submission page because it, uh, there have been c- circumstances where I'm very confident that that number is off. Is incorrect, yeah. And and I will say that for anyone who is in that situation where they mm-hmm. seem like, and they're scratching their head, I'm like, well, that can't be right. right. There's a good chance that you probably are right and that right. it might be wrong. <laughs> the good thing that, that I have solace in, though, is that it's it's going to get worked out. It's mm-hmm. going to go through the process. It's going to take longer than normal. Right. But, you know, once the colleges are able to get their hands on these and they'll see the results, it'll all get worked out at the end. It's just yes. we've got to be patient and go through this process and, and yes. all of the transitions. And we know it's hard for people who have already been really patient for right. the last three months. Yeah. Like, it didn't open when it was supposed to, typically in a typical year. Yeah. It's now open, but we're still saying, be patient. Right. Wait for it. And so we do understand your frustrations. So let's get into a little bit of um, like details here, Keith. When they say it was a soft launch, mm-hmm. what does that mean? What does that even mean? So basically, it, the best way I can describe it is kind of like when a new restaurant comes up and on the block. <laughs> you know, a lot of times restaurants will open maybe a couple weeks before the grand opening with all the balloons and everything going off. Right. You know, just to kind of go through the motions, work out the kinks. The FAFSA is no different. They've had a major, major overhaul of this thing from start to finish. The formula is different. The form is different. The website looks different. All of these new elements that will, once we get over the hump, will make this an easier, more automated, more correct FAFSA. And those are all good things. We're just in that kind of clunky period of getting through those growing pains. So essentially, when we're talking about this soft launch, it is what it sounds like. They're opening it up for a few hours. And then when they're noticing glitches or kinks in the system, they're shutting it back down. And then they're working on those. Once they get that up and running, they're opening it back up. I know a lot of families have have seen a couple different messages during the soft launch period where one is that, like, the buttons to enter the FAFSA would just be grayed out. Right. And all that means is that's one of those times where it's off, you know, temporarily when they're trying to fix things behind the scenes. Um, But, again, be patient, and eventually those buttons will work. Mm -hmm. The other thing I've seen in the last few days, um, if you don't see that grayed out, sometimes you'll get like a message basically that you're in like a waiting room mm-hmm. and a lot of that has to do with just traffic, traffic and, right. and that's something that that you know is is not a new thing especially the first week or so that the FAFSA opens up you got to keep in mind guys it's not just Kentucky this is a nationwide federal form mm-hmm. so folks in all the states are, are on this thing and experiencing some of the same things that we're seeing right and and I think you know I like to imagine that this is stupid but i like to imagine it there's like a big lever over it at, at you know 100 fafsa road or wherever it is and they 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 notice like okay this is happening repeatedly let's shut the system down they kind of like pull that lever and turn everything off and um you know and i kind of addressed this on instagram live where i said it could change minute to minute You know, I mean, there were instances, especially in those first few days, it was opening for, at times, just minutes at a time. Right. And then they would, like, pull that lever and shut everything down and, you know, work on something technical, and then they would open it back up. And so it was really, really hit or miss. Um, We are, at this point when we're being recorded, uh, it's January 4th today, and so they have announced that they're going to start opening it for about 12 hours a day and not doing the periodic outages. Which I love. I think it's great. Yeah. All we can great. ask for is just to be able to predict some of the, the issues that, that encounter. And I think Definitely. as long as everyone has that expectation ahead of time, it makes mm-hmm. it a lot easier for, for everyone involved. One thing that I do want to address along these lines of the soft launch and, and you know, the FAFSA is already delayed this year. You know, we're mm-hmm. used to it opening up in October. We're going back to this January thing just for this particular cycle. Right. Next year, all the plans are to go back to an October opening of the FAFSA. Here's the thing. I know a lot of folks are feeling anxious about, specifically in Kentucky, with us being a first-come, first-served state. Mm-hmm. I think it's important for us to, like, know to, like, like at least just understand, like, that just because we're a first-come, first-served state, it doesn't mean that our money's about to run out anytime soon. Right. I know our student aid department here at Kia has mentioned that, that we are not worried about this money running out in the next few weeks or anything like that. Right. They're still projecting that it's going to be much later into the school year before we're going to have to start 
worrying about like the cap grant and other state aid programs potentially right. uh, going through those funds. I think that's a good point because I do think that there is a sense of urgency. You know, we've waited till January. Yeah. There's a sense of urgency of like, okay, now it's open. Now I've got to get it filed. And what I am taking from FSA, Federal Student Aid's messaging, is it's okay to wait. Yeah. Like, you're going to have plenty of time to file it. Just wait. And I think it's helpful for you guys to hear that from Kentucky, too, for us to say it's okay to wait. Now, I don't want you to wait till spring break. Right. I don't want you to wait till this summer. But you can wait till next week. Yeah. You can wait a couple of weeks until the drama surrounding the FAFSA launch has died down a bit. Absolutely. And that's the thing. What I've experienced in, you know, the four or five days that this thing has been open is that every day it's getting a little bit better. Yeah. A little more user friendly, less time offline. I know yeah. I was at a FAFSA workshop yesterday, and I think you were too. Mm -hmm. For the most part, we were able to get quite a few people through it. Through All the way through it. Two yeah. days ago, that wasn't the case. Right. So, you know, every day I feel like it is getting closer and closer to just being what we consider an open FAFSA. Right. A fully open, yes. Yeah. Um, so, so when we talk about the glitches and the kinks, what are some common glitches that people are seeing? I'm, In addition to, like, it just not being open. Right, yeah. I, that's, that's probably the majority of the things that I'm mm -hmm. hearing is, like, I'm not able to access it. And right. And there's not really anything we can do other than just be patient, give it some time check in later, check in periodically, right. and it, it'll eventually work. Once they get into the FAFSA, I have seen some timeouts a few times mm -hmm. where they'll be like halfway through and it just starts spinning. And and that's something that we it, we encourage that all the time. Yeah, that, we see not, that all the time. Yeah, yeah, so that's not even... In a regular year. I don't even think that has a whole lot to do with soft launch. I'd say that probably has more to do with volume and just the number yes. of people that are on this thing this early, you know, in the cycle. Right. Um, and then again, I have noticed some of the SAI stuff not yes. linking up how it should in terms of that student aid index that, that the FAFSA will spit out that helps determine aid eligibility. Right. Those numbers are not always accurate. And, and you know, and that's something federal student aid is working through. They'll, they'll get that going in the, in the right direction. Yes. I think it's just going to be one of those kinks that they're working through at this point. And we, there was guidance that they put out even before this opened right. saying that students and parents need to be aware that the SAIs that are being um, generated from these initial files may not be valid or verified yet. Yeah. And so I think that, um, you know, this preliminary number that you're seeing, this SAI, I think you definitely need to look at it as that, a preliminary number, because I think we'll validate those and verify those and things will look different. Um, so there's that. And then the other thing that, um, you know, it always has to happen once. It's one of our trademarks. It's one of our trademarks. What was I going to say? <laughs> um, okay, SAS. Oh, um, that's what it is. Is When you've been doing FAFSAs as long as we have, as long as our staff has, um, you can look at someone's financial situation and get a sense of, are they eligible for the FAFSA? Are they not eligible for the FAFSA? Or for the, are they eligible for the FAFSA? Just turn my mic <laughs> off. The answer is yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's eligible for the FAFSA, turn my mic off. I'm, I'm fired. Um, are they eligible for financial aid? Are they eligible right. for grants? Things like that. And so you have a sense. Like you can look at it and you can go, okay, I have a sense of what this SAI is going to be if this family is making $20,000 a year. I kind of have an idea of right. what their SAI is going to be. And so when we say the SAI is experiencing glitches, what we will see or what we're hearing reports of is a family that we know fairly sure this family is going to be eligible for some free aid. Yeah, like a Pell Grant. Like a Pell Grant, right. state grants, things like that. And they're seeing an SAI of like nine 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 nine. Like right. that's not Which there. is like the tippy top of the SAI chart. Exactly. Yeah. You're eligible for nothing. Right. Like in fact we're gonna make you pay for some of the other people in the state. <laughs> 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 um, and that's not, so that's not a valid SAI. And so we can see that right off the bat, like, yeah. oh, this is a glitch. A glitch that I keep hearing about, which I think is going to be uh, a bit messy, is students who uh, have a bachelor's degree, maybe they're going for a graduate program, are filing the 24-25 FAFSA, and they're getting a message on their FAFSA submission summary saying that they're eligible for a Pell Grant. Right. And that's really muddy because as most people in the financial aid world know once you have a bachelor's degree, there's no Pell Grants for you. 
like you're not really eligible for those anymore. And so that's a glitch that I think uh, is confusing and maybe a little bit misleading and uh, hopefully in one of the outages that gets fixed. Yeah. I mean, my advice to anyone, at least in the early stages of this cycle, is see things on that submission summary at this point in the game is almost like a placeholder. Just know, take it on the surface level that at least you have some sort of, um, you know, sign that this thing has gone through. Right. And I feel like that's all we can ask of it mm-hmm. at this point. Let the college digest the, the stuff that is on your FAFSA, which is going to take some time, longer yeah. of a turnaround time than, than what we're used to. Um, but, you know... I would not put a whole lot of weight into either what that SAI says or what it right. says about estimated eligibility at this point in time. Just see it as a placeholder, and that's a great sign that you have confirmation that this thing was submitted. Do you need help paying for college? Your first step is completing a FAFSA, free application for federal student aid. The 24-25 FAFSA will be available in late December 2023 and is more user-friendly. More students will be eligible for aid than ever before. Kia counselors and others are ready to help you. You're not in this alone. For more information, use the QR code or text money to 800-928-8926. Or you can visit gearupky.org slash money. would not put a whole lot of weight into either what that SAI says or what it right. says about estimated eligibility at this point in time. Just see it as a placeholder, and that's a great sign that you have confirmation that this thing was submitted. And that's a good point, Keith, because um, FSA has confirmed that all FAFSAs that have been submitted during this time, if you are getting notification that you're complete, you're submitted, that is valid. Right. And you once we get a full launch, you won't have to go back in and do anything special. Sure. That that if you're submitted, you're seeing an SAI, you're potentially seeing some grant estimation estimates, you're good. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do anything else on the back end, which is good news. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And so speaking of that, anything good people are seeing? Like are you hearing positive reports? Well, with all of the tech issues that, that we've talked about, you know, it, it, it is hard to remember sometimes that at the end of the day, the FAFSA, the simplification of the FAFSA, by and large, is working. It's working. I've noticed just in the FAFSA workshops I've been in the last couple of days, people are getting through this outside of the tech issues right. quicker than what they would have before because yeah. they're not digging through tax papers as often mm-hmm. as they were. They're not doing all of these extra hoops as much. Um, so the idea of like giving the consent and being able to use that direct data exchange, it seems like it is working how it was intended to. Right. And to me, if, if I had the choice before the FAFSA opened up of what would be working and what wouldn't work, that's the part that I'm most concerned about (laughs) because that's where all of the information that's going to determine that aid eligibility is pulling from. So you give me that piece of it working, not too bad. I can deal with the tech issues and the website stuff that everyone's been encountering. And I know it's frustrating, but just knowing that, the, the, the nuts and bolts, the foundation of the FAFSA simplification is working it's as it there. intended to. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's what I was going to say is that I talked to someone recently and she said, I think maybe I filed the wrong form because uh, you said there's no renewal process. Mm-hmm. And she said, my son, she filed for him. He's an independent student. He's going to graduate school. And she said, all the information was there. She said, so I think I did file a renewal. And I said, I think what you're experiencing is a true simplified FAFSA. Yeah. Because we confirmed that it was a 24-25 FAFSA that she filed, and so demographic information is going to come from your SAI. Or sorry. FSAID. I knew what you were saying. I'm, I've already asked you guys to turn my mic off. Okay? <laughs> this is on y'all at this point. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> all of that information is going to come in from the FSAID. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all of your tax information is coming in from Direct Data Exchange, what other questions did, would it need to ask her, especially for an independent, unmarried student making less than $60,000 a year? What college are you going to? Right. And then sign the form. Yeah. Like, and so I said, I think what you've experienced is FAFSA simplification. Yeah. I don't think you've done anything wrong. I think, it's, I think it all worked. Now, I will say I did hear some reports, not so much in the last couple of days, but, you know, the FAFSA did open before December 31st. Sure. The soft launch started on December 30th. 
And in those first few days, and I don't know that this is still happening, but in those first few days, um, there were reports that everyone was having to manually enter their tax information, mm-hmm. that DDX really wasn't online right. yet. So, uh, but your experience yesterday was that it was happening. Yeah, everyone who was able to get onto the form was that they were able to go through that as that's well. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's good news. Right. So mm-hmm. I, I think we are seeing good things too. I don't think this is just the soft launch ruined everybody's world and we all, our heads all exploded and the FAFSA isn't working. I think there's good things happening across the nation yeah. with the FAFSA. I think the tough part is, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions about, you know, when can we expect a full launch where mm-hmm. it's not going to be coming offline? You know, as we talked right. about already that, you know, on uh, January 3rd, they mentioned, you know, that for the foreseeable future, they're going to open this thing up from like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., which I think is a huge improvement Agreed. of not knowing when it'll be offline and when it's online. But, you know, unless you've heard something different, Cassie, I'm still not hearing like an exact time frame of when yeah. we can all expect that all of these glitches are behind us. I think it's just going to be one of those things where we're just going to have to go through that process and just kind of check it day by day and see how, I it's, agree. how it's doing. Yeah, I think so, too. They have not announced a full launch right. at this point. And like Keith was saying, you know, they're they're at least giving us 12-hour windows, yeah. which I think is golden. I don't want to file a FAFSA at 1 a.m., <laughs> So it's, I'm yeah. fine with it being offline at that point. Um, <clears throat> and so having at least that tells me we're getting closer to that full launch. I think we all had a sense of panic when, you know, it was January 2nd, January 3rd. And for the most part, it seemed like it was offline. Right. I mean, I know at least January 2nd. I checked all day long. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was never able to yeah. click the button. I was in the right waiting room or it was grayed out the whole day. Um, And so I think we all had this sense of panic of like, if they're not announcing a full launch, could this be 30 days of a soft launch? And it's looking like that's not the case. Right. So that's good. Yeah. It seems better each and every day. So, you know, again, it's messy every year when this thing first opens up that, you know, the first week can be tough. Um, but again, you know, even in a state that is first come, first serve, like Kentucky is, when it comes to state aid programs like the CAP grant and KTG, the Kentucky tuition grant, at the end of the day, we're nowhere near like running out of time with this thing. Right. This is like worth the starting gate of yeah. this. So yeah. we have time to be patient. It's not anything to, to worry about or stress over. Yes. It's one of those things that now we at least have something to work with and we have a team of people available to help. Right. And I want to say, especially if you are, it, really, if you're anyone listening, um, I'm sure it's mostly just going to be me and Keith listening um, but <laughs> in my kitchen while I'm making yeah. dinner. Of the 30 views of last, I can only <laughs> account for like 25 of them. So right. I was there's the other, someone out there. I was the other right. five. So, <laughs> well, yeah, Lene, Lene was yeah, one. Yeah, she was one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but if you're listening, it's a slow burner. It it, it's gonna. We're, we'll pick we're up gonna a pick up some time. steam. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah. Pick, I think my mom listened to one. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Yeah. She turned it off halfway right. through. Uh, <laughs> thanks, mom. Uh, but uh, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, I have to urge you be patient with your outreach counselor too, yeah. because even though none of this is ours, we don't own the FAFSA. Sure, we're not the FAFSA. We don't make the decisions. We're not the software builders behind this. We're the person in front of you when this stuff is happening. Mm -hmm. We're the person who says we have to reschedule a FAFSA workshop because it's offline today or whatever the case is. Um, We've not had to do that yet. But um, so I know when I was in the field, at least, I dealt with a lot of parents who like it has to happen right now. Like you've got to meet me right now. I've got to get the FAFSA filed right now. And so I just urge you, be patient with Mm -hmm. your counselors. Our counselors serve, on average, eight to ten counties apiece. And they have lives outside of work. We put parameters on how much they're allowed to work because we're humans. Um, You know, we don't want to get, like, sued by OSHA. OSHA? Would it be OSHA? I don't know. Sounds sounds (laughs) good. We don't know. (laughs) We don't want to overwork our people. Um, And so... Be patient. Be understanding of that, that, you know, they're doing everything. And meeting parents and helping with the FAFSA not in a school setting, which I know a lot of our staff do, is really above and beyond. I mean, that's not an expectation. The Kia Outreach Counselors, I've been so impressed with them Mm -hmm. during this whole transition and, and, you know, 
not to brag, but they're always excellent. Yes. And, no, but, I'll brag about them right, all day. Yeah. <laughs> to brag. Right, yeah. They're amazing. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day, trust me, if, if you're a student or a family and, and you're, you're going through this thing and you get frustrated, I assure you, our outreach counselors are frustrated too. Yeah. They're just as frustrated, if not more frustrated, when right. they see Because they're seeing it across the state. Yeah. Our outreach counselors are aching to help people mm-hmm. and, and get through these as, as easy and as convenient as possible. Yeah. So it, it's frustrating to us too when things aren't going according to plan. Right. You know, right. So, so just be patient with us. We're doing everything that we can to, to try to make this a, a good, solid, quick, smooth process, efficient yeah. experience for everyone. And, you know, I think and it's so speaks... far they, they've gone with it with stride. You know, everyone they've I've talked to great. on staff. Yeah. I think it speaks volumes about our outreach counselors that several of them were still off this week. Like, mm-hmm. they were still on their holiday break, and yet texting us and, and being part of these things and part of these conversations, because, like, we, the way we're built in outreach, we can't stay away. Like, yeah. we want to be a part it's of like it. Christmas it's like Christmas morning for us when the facts <laughs> open. So, so. Right. It, it's something what did you get for to. Christmas? Yeah, the exactly. 24, 25 fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a bleak <laughs> year. <laughs> Can't all be winners. <laughs> That's right. Not every year has to be phenomenal. Right. Um, okay, Keith. So maybe you were one of the lucky ones. Put yourself back in the shoes of a seventeen-year-old. Mm-hmm. Reach way Which back is into harder the... and harder to do each and every day. <laughs> Reach you, way back into yeah. the vault. You're seventeen. <laughs> you filed your FAFSA. Mm-hmm. When are you going to hear from your college? So back in those days, it, it, well, <laughs> back in my day, it would have been a long time because it would have been on a paper FAFSA. But let me just Back say, in like, his day, they I, were still chiseling yeah, the right, stone. Yeah, like. exactly. So it took a while for the carrier pigeon to get to the <laughs> campus. Uh, but let's just say I was 17 a few years ago. Right. Then, like, you know, if you were able to do an online FAFSA, it was just a few days. And that was, like, the big perk of doing an online FAFSA for it to go through the process. It's a lot more of a delayed situation this year yeah. for this particular cycle. I know we're hearing, like, what is it, six weeks typically mm-hmm. for colleges to receive these records and to be working on that. and. We may have mentioned this uh, in a previous episode, but that's not just like for this January opening type of thing. This is something that's going to be ongoing that we're going to see. That, the cycle, well, I right? have so I have done a deep dive into research on that specific thing. So, um, again, if you're my mom and you watched the last <laughs> episode, <laughs> hi mom, we talked about um, you know it being that kind of rolling delay. Yeah. That if a person files January 1st or a person files January 15th, it's still going to be four to six weeks. Okay. I'm not getting confirmation on that. Okay. The, the deep dive that I've done is not bringing up. I heard that from, like, one organization, one person within that organization, and then I told the world. And um, <laughs> then after I checked my sources and I researched it, it could be wrong. So, um, yeah. So, I just, I, I don't know how, how accurate that information is. So... We'll just say, be prepared for a big delay in hearing from yeah. your college or university. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. So I maybe it's one of those things where we'll kind of wait and see, and mm-hmm. you know, hopefully it's sooner rather so than So hopefully later. it's a one time delay. Yeah. And so on the on the back end on the college side, uh, the the information that your college gets from your FAFSA is called an ICER. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know what that stands for? <laughs> no. Don't no. Even ask me. Institutional yeah. Student Something Record Information Record. Yeah, I made that up. Yeah. Um, it might be right. Financial aid office days. <laughs> right, right. Um, so when when your college gets your ICER, typically it's like a three day period. Right. Like you file your FAFSA three days later, your college has that information. So what you're saying is this year, it could be a four to six week delay before the college right. sees your information, and that could be like suddenly on February first, colleges across the nation have all these ICERs come rolling in. Mm-hmm. Or it could be a more gradual process. We're not entirely sure at this point. Yeah. Um, it's a delay, no matter what. And then, you know, one thing that I've experienced is a lot of parents reaching out to me saying, okay, our 2022 taxes don't reflect the money that we have now. There's been a, a you know, mm-hmm. a reduction in income for yeah. one reason or another. Maybe someone <laughs> lost a job or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Divorce, mm-hmm. lost a job, whatever the case may be. And so that's going to fall under that special circumstance, which falls under um, a professional judgment. Right. And I've been telling parents who are doing this, I'm like, let's file your FAFSA now. Do not contact your school yet. Yeah. Because they can't 
even see yeah, this don't information see yet. On their end. Right. right. So their guess is as good as ours at that point. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, that's something to keep in mind is you're really not going to hear any communication from your college regarding your FAFSA mm -hmm. until at least the beginning of February. At least. Yeah. I will say the one thing that, that should bring a little bit of solace with that, like if, if you are, you know, if you're like me and you get kind of worked up about waiting, you know, at times, <laughs> and you don't like that, that in-between limbo period, right, where like you've done the stuff on your end and now you're just waiting to hear something. Right. Just know, it's not just you, like everyone yeah. is experiencing the same thing in that. And, and yes. at least that, just knowing that I think can help put some of the worries at ease that- Agreed. It's just going to be a slower process for everyone across the board. And just right. be patient. It's all going to work itself out in the end. Yes. We're just, everything that we are just trained to know about the college access cycle of when you apply, when you do your FAFSA, when you get these award notifications, yeah. just push it all back a little bit is probably what, what you know. Again, I'll, hopefully if, if you're a student and you're hearing this and you're working on your FAFSA uh, or, or planning to very soon, there's nothing stopping you from applying, making sure all your admission applications are put to bed, and yeah. then, you know, just be very patient and know that it's going to take a while for the FAFSA and the financial aid stuff to all come together. Yeah. Don't, it will. Don't call it's them. It's just going to be a while. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't call your financial aid office, please. Um, <laughs> because that's, I mean, that, I feel so sympathetic to our financial aid administration friends out there who are navigating this on that end, and it's it's really ugly for them and mm -hmm. so you know you guys as students or parents saying like well I haven't heard anything from my college I haven't heard anything so I'm going to call them or email them don't do that because they are majorly backed up yeah. you know they've not been able to process any FAFSAs and they're not going to be able to process any until at least February mm -hmm. and then they have February to May really to process all current student FAFSAs, all incoming student FAFSAs, and get you an aid notification so that you can make a decision if you're a high school senior about where you want to go to college. Right. It's a quick turnaround. That's a lot of work. Yeah, and so to any change, you know, I, I'm I'm so happy about the changes that make the FAFSA quicker and easier and more accurate for families. The downside it does seem like there's a lot more burden on the financial aid side, on the yeah. back end, on the processing side of things. So the, the, the eligibility piece after the FAFSA is filed is still, it seems like there's going to be a lot of labor and yeah. a lot of, a, a lot of time burden. that's going to be spent. So I, I, do, I do feel for those folks right. in the financial aid office. Send them cookies, yeah. <laughs> beverages, whatever you, whatever your style is. Um, okay. So let's say that you haven't yet filed your, filed your FAFSA. Mm -hmm. You're a current college student. You are a high school student who's getting ready to go to college. What are what's your plan? What's your take? Are you gonna get on there and try to file today? Are you gonna wait? What are you? What are your options? If it were me, if I was doing this as a student today, I wouldn't. I would probably be very patient with it. Mm -hmm. Not to say I wouldn't check it out. I'd go to studentaid.gov and see, you know, if I can get on there, go ahead and knock it out. But if I saw a grayed out button or I'm in this waiting room or whatever, I'm giving it a few days. That's just the way I look yeah. at it because I know that even in the, in Kentucky as a first come first serve state that we're nowhere near running out. So we right. have time. So to me, there's no sense in feeling this urgency of rushing to get this done mm -hmm. in the first couple weeks of January. There's nothing that's going to happen to you if you wait until the first couple of weeks of February. Even, right. You know, and right. and I would venture to say, I'll go out on a limb here. I'm not going to guarantee this, so don't hold me to this. But I'd be shocked if we're seeing a lot of the same issues we see today a month from now. Okay. I, I just, just basing that off of how the FAFSA has opened in previous years. And I know there are a lot more changes this year. So it could take a little bit Cough longer. directly into my mic. Right. Yeah, that's always great. Can yeah. you hear this? Yeah. At least it's crystal clear now instead of distorted. <laughs> right. So that does help. You can hear all the, yeah. the business happening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crystal clear, high definition snot. Hacky. Yeah, right. Um, but it's anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I would be shocked if a month from now we're talking about the same issues we're experiencing today. So the way I look at it is check it periodically. If you run into a snag, don't feel like you have to like, fight with it for hours. I would right. not do that. I would wait until I could seamlessly go through this in 30 to 45 minutes. I agree. I, I don't, I wouldn't borrow the frustration. I just right. wouldn't do it. Um, I still have a few friends, you know, I'm not in the field anymore, so I'm not in schools filing FAFSAs every day, but I still have a few friends that I help them file their FAFSA and like my kid's a school principal, like I want to get in good with her. So like, 
I'll be filing her FAFSA. Um, and I've told them, like, January 15th or beyond, let's sit down and take care of it. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's like what you said. Like, I just, if you were, especially if you're someone helping someone else file the FAFSA, and then some, they're standing over your shoulder and they're, like, watching you and it's spinning and spinning or you're in a waiting room. You're like, this is awkward. Yeah. So I just. I kind of feel like there's, like, a setting on the FAFSA website. If someone, if too many people are watching it at one time, that's when it starts <laughs> right. spinning and spinning. I'm the if same you way look with away, the that's just a pro <laughs> trip. If you look away, I guarantee you it'll start working. Yes. Absolutely. The same way, ha- same thing happens about typing. If yeah. someone's watching me type, yeah. Yeah. my fingers have no idea where they're going. <laughs> like, I'm. Back in, you know, high school again. Because that, that's when we learned to type on computers, folks, is right. back in high school. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm with you on that. Like, if like at this point, I'm closer to the parents' age of students. And so I identify with that more. So if my student were getting ready to go to college um, and we needed to file the FAFSA, I would wait mm-hmm. a couple of weeks, um, you know, middle of January or so. But if the high school that my student went to was saying we're having a FAFSA workshop. I would still go (laughs) because I think that uh, our outreach counselors have really good information and you can at least get some questions answered. Even if you don't get your FAFSA completed that night sitting in your computer lab at your high school. Of course. Yeah. Our outreach counselors are a wealth of knowledge. So, you know, some families, they show up to these events at like a high school or a college campus where our outreach counselors are there. They have that one specific question about their Mm -hmm. particular situation. Mm -hmm. And once you get that answered, then you're good to go. So don't feel like you have to sit there and fight through the tech issues. If you just have a few questions, go to one of those FAFSA workshops in your area. They're all over the place. Almost every school in Kentucky invites our outreach counselors to do FAFSA workshops throughout the winter and spring. I encourage everyone to have a conversation with your Kia outreach counselor about your specific situation. If you have something you're confused about or worried Mm -hmm. about, there's a good chance that they have some good news to share that will help you along the way. Right. And then worry about the actual, like, doing of the fast, the completing of it, when the tech issues kind of get resolved. When the glitches get worked out. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So much sage advice. You know, <laughs> we may have to say, I don't know, when they ask us questions about why is the parent invitation not sending. Um, and we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we don't always know. But... We at least have good advice, like, ask your outreach counselor. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know, else. but it'll all be okay. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Was it, it, they were, um, it, we were all texting yesterday, and Brittany, who's one of our outreach counselors, was saying, you know, I went live when the FAFSA opened, and I said, like, we're going to get through this together. This time is, is trying, and we're frustrated, but it's okay, and it'll all work out in the end. And she said, you're like <laughs> Governor Brashear during COVID. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> I, like, as it was coming out of my mouth, and I was like, we'll get through this together, I, like, felt that vibe yes. of, like... <laughs> it's very reassuring. I am the FAFSA governor, and I am <laughs> calming your fears Good. by yeah. saying, I don't know, but we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. So, thanks for joining us for this episode of Coffee with Kia. We'll be back with more good information and mediocre jokes uh, um, and um, and really, really white coffee. Yeah. There's more cream and sugar right. in this than coffee. Just a cup of milk. Right. Yeah. Straight yeah. milk. Yeah. That's my morning pick-me-up. So, so uh, we have healthy bones and no energy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for joining us. We'll be back with more sage advice for you. In the meantime, follow us on social media. Uh, We have lots of social media events happening and all great information. Contact your outreach counselor if you haven't already. Um, They're a wealth of knowledge and the most awesome people I know. And until then, happy drinking of your coffees. Cheers.